Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 76, we'll take a look at various caching topologies, and specifically within this lesson, the single in-memory data grid as the first caching topology we'll take a look at. As a matter of fact, we'll be taking a look at four various caching topologies in the next four lessons. This lesson, we'll be taking a look at the single in-memory data grid kind of cache. Um, in the next lesson, so number 77, we'll take a look at distributed caching or client server. In lesson 78, we'll look at a replicated or in-process cache. And then lesson 79, we'll take a look at a fourth topology, which is a near-cache hybrid, kind of combining some of these together. And then finally, in lesson 80, and we'll take a look at choosing the right type of caching topology. We'll look at various factors and conditions about when to choose which one. But for this lesson, we're going to take a look and kind of kick off these next five lessons by looking at the single in-memory data grid. Now, for all of these, I'm going to be using examples in Apache Ignite. I chose to use Ignite for several reasons. Uh, one, it's open source, and number two, um, it supports a host of languages, and so both Java and also C Sharp um, with Ignite.net. So let's take a look at the first topology we're looking at, which is a single in-memory data grid or database cache. In this kind of model, which is the simplest form of caching, we've got various services or applications which are accessing the database. And in order to kind of increase performance, we want to cache some of that data. And so what we have is an in-memory cache in the form of either an in-memory data grid or an in-memory database that we can maybe use SQL queries against, where that data is actually in memory within that particular component or service or application. Uh, there's a client lab associated with this so that now I don't have to go to the database for every single call. If something's not in the cache, of course, then I would go back and forth to the database. Almost every caching topology or uh, caching product uh, supports an in-memory data grid or in-memory database cache. Um, all of these together uh, would do that. Now let's take a look at Apache Ignite because I want to show you some aspects about um, how to use this in-memory in cache. And so what we do is we add the libraries and whatever dependent libraries. For example, at the time of this recording, I happen to be using Ignite 2.7. So I'm going to add the jar there or the DLL if I happen to be using the .NET version. Uh, now, what I first create is something called a cache configuration. Now, don't forget, this is my own cache. No one else's. This is just a single scoped cache. And so what I do is I create a new cache configuration and I put the name of the cache. Now what I'm going to cache here um, are a list of all of our customer names because every time I need a customer name I don't want to have to go out to the database every single time to retrieve that. So I'm going to cache those. And what I do here is I set the cache mode in Ignite to cache mode.local. That tells Ignite that this is a single in-memory cache. And so now what do I do? is I set the client mode in the Ignite configuration to false. And that tells Ignite, Apache Ignite, that this is not a client server cache or a distributed cache, but just a local cache without a client associated with it. Now, I actually start Ignite within my in-memory process. And so I do ignition.start passing in that Ignite configuration. And so now, I can say get or create cache based on that configuration saying this is a local cache of a named cache called names. And so that's going to give me an Ignite cache. The first value is going to be, in this case, the customer ID. And the second one is that customer's name. Now, let's play around with using this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a customer ID from the request. And that gives us this customer ID. And I want to look up the name. And so I'm going to say the name is cache.get. And so I take that cache and I say get this customer ID. Now, very typically, I might say this. If the name coming back is null, that means it's not there. Now I have to get it from the database because certainly I may not have all 4 million customers in memory. This is a very traditional kind of coding. However, there's a couple of options we have available. Um, there's something called a read-through 
And that's another option I have here. In other words, when I do a cache.get, I can do something called a read through where I don't have to have this cyclomatic complexity to say, oh, if it's not in the cache, get it from the database. But rather, I can basically delegate that kind of logic to Apache Ignite or any other kind of cache to be able to say if it's not there, and then go and get it for me, very similar of how, hi uh, how Hibernate or nHibernate actually works. And so that's another option I have. Well, let's take a look at writing to the cache because there's a couple of options I have here as well, three of them. <laughs> so let's say I'm going to change the name. So I get the customer ID from the request, and I also get the new name of the customer from the request. And so now I'm going to update the database to say this customer ID now has a new name. So I do that database update. And once I get a commit from that database, then I put it into my cache using a cache.put. Now there's a couple of options I have here. Instead of doing this update database, what I can do is something called a write through or a write behind. Now the difference is as follows. If I use a write through or write behind, then in that case, I don't need that update database line. I can simply put it right in my cache. And what happens on a write through is that I delegate the writing of that information to the database to the caching technology. Let's say it's Apache Ignite. Now, this happens synchronously on a write through, which means that that cache.put does a blocking wait until Ignite inserts it into the database, gets a commit, and sends me back that confirmation. At that time, it's then put into the cache, and I move on my merry way. A right behind is that same process where I don't need that update database, but the right behind basically is asynchronous. In other words, I'm going to put it into my cache, and eventual consistency will apply now, where Ignite will say, well, don't worry about it. I'll take care of that right away. And so I don't actually have that synchronous kind of flow. Uh, where I do have some inconsistencies between my cache and the database at times, but now I, I do have that better performance. All right. So um, for more information, um, first of all, uh, we will be looking at three other caching topologies in the next lessons, um, but I'm very excited to announce uh, the at least the pre-release or the early release of a new book both myself and Neil Ford have been working on called The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. And so I've provided the link there through O'Reilly Media. Um, the full book will be published on February 25th in 2020, but for right now, if you do go to the link, you can actually read the first four chapters, unedited, of course. <laughs> it's just an early re release now available at the time of this particular recording. So this has been Software Architecture Monday. You can get more lessons by actually um, every other Monday. I do a lesson uh, for free in Software Architecture. I also offer um, both public and private training classes. Uh, you can go to my website at the link right there for any sort of private training classes in both architecture and microservices. And also my upcoming events page uh, where you can see where I'll be speaking at various conferences publicly as well as public training offerings I do have. And so this has been Lesson 76, Caching Topologies, um, first looking at the single in-memory data grid. Um, but stay tuned for Lesson 77, where we'll take a look at distributed caching topology. Thank you so much for listening.